Hey, fourth graders, it's me, Miss Tremel, back again for day seven of Number Corner. As always, I'm so excited to be here. I hope everything is well with you, and I hope that you're ready to participate with today's activities. If you're not, get ready, because we are about to roll. All right, here we go. Just like we do every day for Number Corner, we're going to update our calendar grid, and we're going to spend some time today talking specifically about how we are. Um, figuring out what the modern number is when we're looking at these ancient Egyptian symbols. So before we do that, or before we talk more about what's actually happening in our brains as we're figuring it out, let's look see what today is. And even before we look to see, let's make a prediction. Let's see if you can figure out what today's calendar marker is going to look like. All right, let's check it out. Is that what you thought? Yeah? Good. You're getting much better at making predictions because you're getting the hang of this pattern that's happening on our calendar grid. So good job. Now, we need to fill this in for our calendar grid observation form. And when we fill that in, you know I always ask what the modern number is. Well, you may remember I just said we're going to spend some time talking about what our brain is thinking about as we're figuring it out. So we're going to hold off for just a second on finding the modern number for today. And if you already figured it out, great job. Hold on to it. Write it down so you don't forget it because we're coming back in just a second. First, though, I want to look back at September 4th just to use as an example of what I mean when I say, how are we finding the equivalent modern number to our Egyptian symbols? Um, and I'm going to record our thinking together on this whiteboard. Here. And I'm going to record it two ways. I'm going to write it as an expression, but then I'm also going to write it as an equation because I want to make sure you know the difference between an expression and an equation. So I'm going to tell you really quickly. An expression is the calculation that you're doing in your brain to find an answer. The expression, though, just doesn't have the answer attached to it. So there's no equal sign and no answer. But an equation has the equal sign and it has an answer. So looking at our calendar marker for September 4th, and here it is again, how many heel bones are you seeing? Right, we have four heel bones. And what do we know a heel bone is worth? Great, a heel bone has the value of 10. So if I were to write that, if I were to start my expression, I could write it out like this. 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10, right? But we're not done there. We also had four staffs. And how much was the staff worth? Good job, you remember. It's worth one. So in order to complete this expression, to find the modern number for the calendar marker on September 4th, I have to have four heel bones worth and four staffs worth. So this is the expression that we did in our head. This is the expression that I did in my head to calculate the modern number for September 4th. Now, if I were to write this as an equation, though, I need to add the answer. So what is the answer? Good, 44. So here's what my equation could look like. 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, plus 1 equals 44. Now, can the equal sign go at the front of the expression? Absolutely. I can put 44 equals and then my expression, or I can have my expression and then my equal sign. Both of them still have the same value. Did anybody see this, this expression or this equation in a different way or think about how to find the equivalent modern number in a different way? You did four times 10? How come? Right, 
So since you saw four heel bones, you knew they were e each worth 10, you could do four times 10. I'm gonna write that down. Thanks, four times 10, okay? But since that's not all in my expression, I probably should put some parentheses around four times 10, because we know that anything in parentheses should be done first, right? Well, if you didn't, now you know. So four times 10, but I also have to consider my heel bones. So how'd you figure that one out? Or my staffs, excuse me. Oh, so you did four times one. Now, did you add four times one to four times 10? Right, so we have to add four times one to four times 10. Well, Ms. Jamel is having a hard time with these expressions here today. <laughs> Great. Let's see if we can do another. Now let's look at the ninth card. How did you find the equivalent modern number for this calendar marker? You did the same thing? So nine heel bones, so nine times 10, or adding 10 nine times, good, and nine staff. So let me record that. And I'm actually gonna record it using multiplication. I'm gonna say nine times 10 plus nine times one, because we had nine of each. Now, if I leave it as this, nine times 10 plus nine times one, is that an expression or is it an equation? Good, it's an expression. Awesome, so what's the value? How could I make it an equation? Equals what? 99, you got it. Wait, what was that? You know that one heel bone and one staff was 11, so you just did nine times 11? Because there were nine of each? That's really brilliant. I love it. I'm going to record that as well. 9 times 11 equals 99. Awesome job. It kind of reminds me of the distributive property we did um, a few days ago where we took 11 and we broke it down into 10 and 1. Do you remember that? Let's try one more. Let's do or let's actually work out today's marker. So we had. Go back to our calendar. We had a scroll. We have seven heel bones and six staff. So what would my expression look like if I were to solve this, um, or if I were to try to solve for the equivalent modern number? Okay, I'm gonna record here. So I heard, 100 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. Okay, so seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then how many staff do we have? Six. Good. All right. There's another way I could have written this, and it probably would have been much quicker to do it that way. What might that be? Okay, so we have 100 plus 10, right, 7 times 10 plus 6 times 1. Very good. Do you guys see that? We have 100 and then we have 7 10s and we have 6 1s. So, what's our modern number? 176, correct. So we probably should add that to our calendar grid observation form. And here it is, 176, good job. Today, guys, you're gonna be working through um, a calendar worksheet in your uh, math, your number corner workbook. And it's actually on page one and it's called comparing numeration systems. 
So I'm going to leave it up here. And I also want you to open up your book to page one so you can follow along with me. And while you're doing that, just take a few moments to study the number systems here. Do they look familiar? Great, you've seen base 10 blocks before. You've probably worked with them since you were in kindergarten. And we really know our modern numbers, right? The Egyptian numbers, we're getting the hang up because we've worked with them since day one of school in September. But we might need some more practice, which is why we're doing this today. And it's actually kind of fun, at least in my opinion. So it says write the modern numerals and the Egyptian numerals to match each set of base 10 pieces. So let's do the first one together. What is this worth? 10. How many ones do we have? Two, four, six. Right, eight. So 10 plus eight is our expression, which is what? 18, correct. Now I need to draw the symbols that would match that. So which symbol stands for 10? A heel bone. See how good I can do that. And which symbol stands for um, one? Staff, and how many ones do I need? Eight, so I'm gonna do my ones like this. One, two, three, four, kind of like we've seen them on our calendar markers. And here's my eight. All right, I want you to pause this video and work through the next two on your own. If you finish those two and um, you have some extra time, please look at number two and start thinking through it because we'll discuss it very briefly. All right, good luck. You can do it. Okay, what'd you get for the second one? Let's check your answer. Did you get 88? Right, because they're eight tens. So if we're thinking back to our expressions from earlier, we could do eight times 10. We still have eight ones, so that would be eight times one. Were you able to draw the ancient Egyptian numerals to go with it? All right, I'm gonna give it a go. Here it is, check your work. Eight heel bones and eight staff. Okay, what'd you get for the next one? Let's check. Did you get 208? Good job. Now you just have to draw the ancient Egyptian symbols. This is gonna be fun to draw the, swirl, the scroll. Here's my scroll. How many scrolls do we need? Good, we need two. And how many staff? Eight, awesome. Okay, and I said if you finished and you had some extra time to think, start thinking through question number two. How are our modern numbers like the Egyptian numbers? And how are they different? And then which one would you rather use? Good, they both have ones, tens, and hundreds. You're right. How are they different? Is there anything to represent zero? Do our modern numbers, do we have a number that represents nothing? We absolutely do. That's one way they're different. What else? Right, we actually have numbers for two, three, four, and so on. And for the ancient Egyptian numbers, you just have to keep repeating those ones and those tens for the amount of times you need for whatever number you're trying to represent. So then, would you want to use ancient Egyptian numbers? No, probably not. Okay, let's quickly update our calendar collector. And then we're going to talk about multiples again. Okay, so it is the seventh day of school. 
We already have six. We've collected our first full yard. And now we're adding an extra one. And that, and here it is. And we also need to add it to our recording sheet. So, today is day seven. So how many inches do we have? Seven times six. What's one way we could solve that? Great, so seven times six is 42. Well, how many feet does that mean we have? We know we have three feet and an extra six inch piece is only half of a foot, so good, we have three and a half. And I'm actually gonna write it another way as well. How many half pieces do we have? Since we have seven days of school and we collect one each day, so how many half pieces is that? Seven halves. This is another example of an improper fraction. So how many yards do we have? Right, we still have one full yard, and now we have another sixth of a yard. Or if I were to ask how many sixth pieces do we have, what would you say? Yesterday it was six sixth. So today it would be, right, you got it, seven sixth. Good job. All right, our last and final activity for today is to add some more multiples to our number line. Do you remember what a multiple is? Good, it's the answer to a multiplication problem. So when you multiply one number by a given number, the answer you get is a multiple. We also call the answer to a multiplication problem the product. Well, with our key before, we had multiples of two and we labeled them um, by using a blue marker. Today we're doing multiples of three. And so I'm gonna label the multiples of three with a green marker so that we can see the difference. Now, the number three has a greater value than the number two. And we know that there were 50 multiples of two between zero and 100. So how many multiples of three do you think are between zero and 100? Okay, do you think the multiples of three are gonna be even, odd, or even and odd? Right, well, is zero a multiple of three? Yes, how do you know? Right, because three times zero is gonna give you zero. Okay, do you guys think that any of the multiples of two are also gonna be a multiple of three? You think so? Guess we're gonna find out very shortly. So we're gonna do a count around again. And remember when we do a count around, we're changing up our voice. So we talk quiet when it's not a multiple, and then we speak a little louder when it is a multiple. And this time we're gonna count by ones, but we're going to emphasize the multiples of three. So it may sound like this. Zero, one, two, three. Do you think you can handle that? Okay, so I'm gonna circle zero in green. It's also circled in blue, but that just goes to show you that zero is a multiple of two and a multiple of three. And since I did the first one for you, we're gonna start at three, okay? Here we go. So three, four, five, six. Uh-oh, another double multiple. Nine, 10, 12. What are you noticing so far? Are they even, odd, or both even and odd? 
Yeah, they're both. Are we seeing some multiples of two that are also a multiple of three? Yeah, we are. So I wonder how many multiples of three we're gonna have. So far we have how many? One, two, three, four, five. So far we have five in between zero and 12. Let's keep going and let's see how many we'll get. So 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. I'm going to stop right there because I want you to think how many multiples of three do we have now? If you haven't noticed already, I'm counting in threes. And every time I count the third one, I make sure I emphasize it by speaking a little louder. Okay, we're going to continue. We're at 30. Here we go. 33. 36. 39. 42, 45, 48, 51, 54, 57, 60. I'm going to stop right there. When last did we land on a multiple of 10? And I guess I just gave you a clue because 60 is a multiple of 10. Right, the last time we circled a number that ended in zero was 30. Hmm, I wonder what that means. Do you think our pattern is repeating every set of 30? I wonder, well then, how many multiples are in between zero and 30? Let's keep counting. Okay, here we go, we're at 60. 61, 62, 63, 66, 67, 68, 69, 72, 87, 90, we're almost there, let's keep going. Ready? 91, 92, 93, 96, 97, 98, 99. We have to stop there. It looks like 100 is not a multiple of three. So let's think for every set of 30, we have 10 multiples. And if we add zero to that, that'd be an extra one. So I wonder how many multiples of three are there between zero and 100? So if we're saying between zero and 100, we're not gonna actually count zero. So there were 10 between zero and 30, and 10 between 30 and 60, and another 10 between 60 and 90, so that's 30. And then there's some more left off over here. You guys did a great job counting. Thank you for sticking with me. I hope you did, because I would love to play a game with you guys in the future called Biz Buzz Bazooka. If you've never heard of it before, maybe you should try looking it up. So today we updated our calendar grid. We updated our calendar collector. We talked about multiples. If you have some extra time today, I encourage you to revisit the game Splat and play it with a partner, a friend. You guys maybe can play it online, uh, a parent or a guardian, just to make sure you're continuing to practice those multiplication skills. And we'll play again soon. I'll see you guys tomorrow for day eight. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.